This is terrifying. <laughs> Case, welcome to the middle of nowhere. Yeah, that's really where we are, isn't it, Thomas? So in the previous video, we drove this Model T in modern day traffic on modern day roads. And today we've brought it about a hundred miles north of our office to the middle of nowhere. And we're gonna see what it was like driving this car back 109 years ago when it was brand new. We're at the Pawnee Grasslands. This is uh, quite a ways away from where we live. And this seems to be about as close as we're gonna get to Colorado a hundred years ago. This is thousands of acres of preserved grassland with these little trails that wind their way through these rolling hills. And this is exactly what it would have been like, you know, in 1915, unplowed, unpaved roads with little to nothing in between cities when you're out here on the, uh, in the West. Yeah, it certainly looks like the Wild West. We're gonna get the car up and running. So as always, we're gonna hook up our jumper leads to the coil boxes. Yeah, you're bold, no gloves today. No gloves today, Case, I'm running, running a little crazy. <laughs> we got fuel in the carburetor, we're gonna flip the switch to battery, and then Case, it's your job this time. Oh, is time. it my, my turn this time around? Choke out, uh, spark advance. Uh, yeah, let me make sure we're good, we don't need that much choke. Just a little bit of choke. All right, Case, give you're her ready? a crank, yep. Oh, oh ho, there we go. Hey, second try, that's not too bad. Second crank, that's pretty good. All right, we're gonna advance the spark. You wanna choke off? Choke off. We're getting pretty good at that. We're getting pretty good at that. That probably only took us 30 seconds. Now we go out into the great unknown. Tommy. All right, my dude, are you ready? Yeah, see, this feels a lot more fitting than what we did last time. Yeah, this is a really cool experience to be able to see what this car yeah. was like to drive back when it was new. <laughs> it's so, a good stuff. What you gotta understand about the Model T is that these things had tremendous amounts of ground clearance. Yeah, it's not like people were taking these to Moab so much, but they can articulate and move through some pretty uneven terrain. That's right, Case. They were designed for really rough roads, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. the wheels are well over 20 inches. The ground clearance is well over 20 <laughs> inches. I and don't think there were a lot of nice paved roads back in the day, so it makes sense. No, there definitely were not. <laughs> and actually, when you put the Ruxtall, which is our two-speed rear end, into low gear, yeah. it's got a lot of torque, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's got no problem climbing up some steep hills. Although, where we are right now is pretty flat. Now imagine this, over a hundred years ago, you would have had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles of nothing but empty plains and these little... Yeah dirt rutted tracks. It's, I mean, it's amazing to think about today. That's what's daunting when you think about doing a road trip now in a modern car. It's like nothing. But in this, you were going out into the wilderness, obviously no cell phones, and with a high probability of breaking down at some point and having to fix your vehicle in order to complete your journey. Well, that's a great point, Case. If you do break down, you're fixing it. Yeah, or you're walking. <laughs> or you're walking, exactly. There were garages, of course, but not, there's no AAA you could just no. pick up a phone and call to get a tow, right? Not at all. The ride is shockingly good. It is actually pretty good. We're obviously getting bounced around a little bit, but I'm not sure this is any worse than a 1940s Willis Jeep. these Model T's work case is there's a first and a second gear in the transmission. Yeah. But basically what you're supposed to do is get the car into second gear and then really just leave it be, right? Oh yeah. God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> it's getting a little scary now. It's a good thing, honestly, that your steering is so quick ratio on this because you got to make some pretty big corrections. Well, and the tires are only three inches wide. 
I think half of your suspension is in the flex that we get in these wheels. I think you're exactly right. <laughs> we'll go in the back in a second here. <laughs> oh, Whoa, what? is that a power slide? Power slid a Model T. <laughs> and now we're chugging uphill again. But we do actually need quite a bit of ground clearance for what we're driving over now. I'm sure it doesn't look like much, but in an old car like this, yeah, dude, look at the size of the rut that we're traversing right now. Yeah. That's I'm, a big ass rut. I'm pretty impressed. Oh, this is such a cool experience. <laughs> yeah, this would have been exciting. It's exciting to this day. The downhill is more uh -oh. exciting than the up. Yeah, so an interesting point about slowing this car down is that you're only braking with at least the way that ours is spec is in the transmission. So if our Ruxtel, if our rear end comes out of gear, we have almost no brakes at all. Almost none, yeah. Power up the hill. Momentum. <laughs> not a lot We're of, moving around a lot. Not a lot of grip in these tires. Now we got no, to sure. first. We need the no skids on the back. We need the no skids on the back, exactly. <laughs> it works pretty good though. All right, another hill. We'll build some momentum. Oh yeah, this is a steep hill. Oh wow. Are we in low? We're in high gear right now. Are we? Low That's on the bold. trend. No wonder we're power sliding. A little bit of speed up the hill. A little bit. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, down to first. That's yeah, there we gear. go. That's I feel like uh, we might be in terrain suited more for low, but hey, we got places to be. We're, we're busy modern men. That low gear, once you get into it, that works pretty good, actually. It does. Yeah, this can climb a decent hill. Well, as decent as as your your fuel tank is, because it's gravity fed, and if you go too steep, you literally have to. You're back up starving the hill. of fuel. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, and again, uh, the brakes in this are not not fantastic, brakes. but. We can get a set of Rocky Mountain brakes that would make it better. Yeah, you're right about that. We may want to invest in that in the future. We are in the Rocky Mountains. We, well, we're in the plains of the Rocky Mountains. Well, yeah, right. not right now, but in general. How's that look? Looks great. You picked up some goodies with the... Oh, we picked up some uh, tumbleweeds? Yeah. That seems period correct. Can you pull them off? Period correct modification. Yeah, we can, we can pull them off. First time that car has had a tumbleweed in a while. <laughs> Okay, so we made it to this really cool windmill, which is probably about as old as the Model T. And what this does is it spins when it's windy and then pumps water out of the ground and into this corral for the cows. And back when this car was new, that would have been quite the marvel. I think people would have come from miles around just to see it. <laughs> I'm not so sure about that case, but it would have been a good place to maybe fill up your radiator because it was very common for these cars to leak water out the radiators to boil over. So that's why you would carry something like this that would have gas, oil, and water just so you could keep on your way. Yeah, these are basically jerry cans. So this is not actually tied into the different loops for these fluids that are built into the car. That's just a separate container that you can go to top off. And in case you're wondering, the fuel tank is underneath the seat there. It holds it's like seven gallon tank. And I forgot to turn the fuel off last night. So we are down to maybe half a gallon in there. So it's gonna be interesting getting back to the trailer because if you don't turn the fuel off at the tank, then it just constantly feeds the carburetor, which will spill over and you'll lose gas. Do these, have you ever seen a number for fuel economy on these? Um, no, but we could be the first to get that number at some point. MPG what a loop. We could just top it all the way up, completely full. That'd be a, be a fun video. All right, Case, we're gonna try to start this car on the Magneto, which means that we need to get the engine spinning around fast enough to actually get some spark to uh, the plugs or some yeah. voltage to the coil box. You've actually gotten the car to start on, Mag. Uh, we'll see if I'm man enough to do it. Oh yeah, that feels good. Nice dude, that was awesome. <laughs> Now the thing that has surprised me about this, and off camera you showed me how to drive this car, it's really not that difficult to drive. Well, I liked what you related it to, which is a tractor. Yeah, it's a lot like driving a tractor. Your throttle is here at the steering column, and uh, yeah, 
I, I, it, it really doesn't share a lot with the experience of driving a modern car, that's for sure. No, it really does not. So you have three pedals as a refresher. The right yeah. pedal, that's your brake. The middle pedal is reverse. And the left pedal lets you go between seconds, which is all the way up, neutral, which is in the middle, and first, which you just activated there, which is all the way down. Yeah. And uh, we're definitely having to work the controls a little bit, given these road conditions. <laughs> but yeah. it makes it fun. Model T does struggle a little on some of the steeper hills, but then when it flattens out, you can really get it in a second and then drive it on the throttle. Yeah. It is alarming just how much the body moves on it, these three inch tires. It really does. There's, there's so much flex in this whole chassis. Now, coming up on a, what looks like in a, oh no, we lost our uh, radiator cap. Oh no. It's, uh, it's sitting there by the headlight. You want to go into neutral with the handbrake? Yeah. I'll get it. <laughs> these are all parts of uh, Model T ownership. I don't know how these cars didn't shake themselves completely apart. I think a lot of them did. <laughs> yeah, that, that wouldn't surprise me. And it's a non-pressurized cooling system. Yeah, so the radiator cap could come off. It's not the end of the world. It is interesting trying to bring this car to a stop. It's really hard because what you really want to do is wow, oh. stick it into neutral on the left pedal, but not first, because if you go into first, um, you can actually over rev the engine. So it's a real balance, wouldn't you say? Yeah, and That's really the, the engine braking, I, I'd say does more for you than the actual brake a lot of the time, because right now I'm not using my brake pedal at all. <laughs> I'm just engine braking. And I think that's the way to go. Yeah, the difference between first and second is kind huge. of alarming. Yeah, there's a huge gap between them. But this car is easy to drive and, and fun to drive once you get a feel for what the controls are actually doing. And I think, you know, now that we've gone a few miles down this rutted path, we're both kind of in agreement that it is a very comfortable driving experience. Yeah, I, I wouldn't... Uh, I wouldn't trade in your Silverado ZR2 with DSSV spool valve shocks to get one of these, but at the same time, I'm impressed at how not bad it is, well, given how is. rickety it looks. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. <laughs> it is. We do have these optional shock absorbers, which are these little like pyramid things on the corners of the uh, actual axles itself. So, yeah, that was back in the first year, yeah. Yeah, but once you get over the top of one of these hills, easy enough, you just pop right back in a second. Good to go. You know, it's very unintuitive by modern standards, <laughs> but it makes a lot of sense. Oh. Uh-oh. Is that, that might be fuel? That might be fuel. We might be out of gas. What's funny too, is that we brought two diesel trucks here, so we don't have anything to siphon fuel out of. Great. You know what I mean? Does it look pretty dry? Bit of fuel? Yeah, we got some in there. You think it maybe starved just because we were going because uphill? Maybe or? because we were going up a hill. Here, we're gonna go ahead and- We're definitely, we're low on fuel. But we're not out of fuel. It's a big difference. You're dripping pretty good up here. Oh, yeah, that's, that's just, just coolant. So that's not a- That's just how it works, Alex. Wow. Well, maybe we're good. Sometimes it just stops and you got to restart it. So we're going to keep going up the hills. Oh, Back yeah. In action. Back in business. Woo. <laughs> I am genuinely surprised at how much I enjoy driving this vehicle. I wouldn't have expected that, but it's fun. It is really fun, isn't it? Yeah, it's an experience. It's just truly amazing to me that something us Americans built over a hundred years ago still works today, just like it did a hundred years ago. I know this yeah. car was restored sometime probably in the early 50s. So it's not completely original, but it's not far off and it works so well. It's impressive. It's impressive that it's lasted as well as it has. <laughs> We're cruising, man. We are booking it. Trying to keep her going straight. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of steering you have to do at 18 miles an hour is ridiculous. What's funny too is I think it's more off-putting from the passenger seat it's because way I'm pretty worse. I'm pretty sure we're going the same kind of speed that we were earlier. 
but it feels way scarier, right? All right, we got a hill coming up. We're going back to first. Slow it down. Nice. That was a beautiful gear shift. Try traversing this little thing. Nice. The ground clearance in this vehicle is remarkable. Yeah. It really has a lot of ground clearance. It is so tractor-like. It's There's no other way to look at it. We got a corner coming up, Tommy. I don't know if I want to take this corner with a lot of speed. I think that's the right move. The issue with wooden wheels case is they're really strong up and down <laughs> and really weak laterally. So it's probably the right call to... Uh, kind of crawl it. Yeah, to not take those corners too fast. Case. <laughs> this, is so scary. this is terrifying. <laughs> so imagine driving across these prairies a hundred years ago. Yeah. I don't know. The whole family, luggage strapped to the running board, <laughs> just trying to survive. I will say, Case, it's doing better with the heat than it did keeping up with modern traffic. It's not bumping it over like it did last time. And we are in second in high range which is what seemed to make it overheat when we were driving around in the city. So maybe we've got our settings set a little bit better. Yeah, that's right. On a Model T, even Case is standing back. Videographer Alex. We're all leaning back. <laughs> we're all standing back. This feels so wrong. My boil over a little bit. There you go. Well, over a little bit, but nobody died. Not too bad. Yeah, don't do that on any other car. It'd be <laughs> 10 times worse. Probably shouldn't do it on this one either, but we'll fill it up with water to help cool her down. So we're gonna top up the radiator with our gallon of water here, cool her down a little. We haven't quite figured out the overheating issue case, but we're gonna take the head off this car eventually. Yeah, that's something that we have to look forward to. And we're back up. So what's that? This is probably half a gallon we used in- In two miles? <laughs> Maybe a little more than two miles, but yeah, we didn't go far. But Case, what was your overall experience driving the T on roads like these? Oh, it's phenomenal. This is such a fun experience driving this car. It's like nothing you've ever driven. Yeah, it really is something truly unique. There's nothing out there, and it was so comfortable for what this vehicle was. On these type of roads, we weren't being jostled around that much. That front axle, the rear axle, were just flexing away. It worked so good. So look, yes, it's an antiquated thing by modern standards, but you can really see how this would have worked 109 years ago. Yeah, and again, as a car guy, this is just one of the coolest experiences getting to drive one of these in a setting where it feels very much at home. <laughs>